Tonight, our team coverage continues with CARE 11's Bernie Grace, who is also live in Grand Forks. We join Bernie now. Well, these cities obviously look like ghost towns tonight, with the cities unable to provide any essential services to the citizens. Really, the mayor has had no option but to basically tell everyone, pack up and move out. With so much water, it's hard to believe one of the biggest problems in Grand Forks is no water. The city water plant is shut down, and the reserve water supply, gone. And now comes word from the mayor the water plant most likely won't be up and running until June. Water is one of those city services we all take for granted, but without it, it's pretty hard to live. Without water, it's pretty tough to wash up in the morning or brush your teeth. Without water, there are no showers to be had. And worst of all, the sewer problem. And with no water, there's no flushing the toilets. And that's what concerns city officials the most here in Grand Forks. And that's why they want everyone to leave the city, because it's too unsanitary to have people going to the bathroom outside. So after holding out for several days, now most people who have stayed behind have decided it is time to leave. It was just the sewer that was backing up. The National Guard continues to evacuate people as the enormity of this disaster sets in. So you are watching continuing coverage of Flood Fight 97. The local TV station in Grand Forks is broadcasting around the clock, and much of the coverage is as basic as reuniting families separated during the evacuations. Tom uh, Costello, please come to Ron and Vicki Kaiser's. Ron and John are there. Give you those, and I'll start on my pile here. Luckily, we haven't heard of anyone missing. It appears families who got out at different times, they have been reunited or at least gotten in contact with their loved ones. But what a great local service has been to have the stations, the TV station, a couple of radio stations broadcasting these messages. Back no to you. Kidding. Now, Bernie, you said that the, the water treatment plant might not be up and running until June? The 1st of June. They're saying anywhere from uh, probably four to six weeks, maybe even longer. Uh, and as we've talked about before, the crest isn't going to happen until tomorrow, and then it's going to be probably a couple of weeks before the water recedes so they can even get in the building. How are they even going to think about cleaning up without good, clean water? They can't even clean their homes up. That's true. You remember in Des Moines, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, they were down for three weeks or so. That's, That's not an easy process. That is true. Thank you very much, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Well, as Boyd Hooper had mentioned earlier, authorities evacuated several patients from United Hospital in Grand Forks. They're sending them to various other hospitals around the state, including here in the Twin Cities. Ambulances are standing by to pick up those patients, and CARE 11's Greg Vandegrift is standing by at the Air Force Reserve with that story. Greg? Joe, nothing seems immune to the flood in Grand Forks, not even a hospital. As previously, as previously mentioned, a hospital there has been evacuated, and as a result, 15 seriously ill patients are scheduled to be flown from Grand Forks to here. This is the Air Force Reserve Base on the north side of Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. Now, these ambulances over my shoulder are part of a small army, you might say, of 18 to 20 ambulances waiting to take those patients to five different hospitals in the Twin Cities and Rochester. That would include the Mayo Clinic and Hennepin County Medical Center and Abbott Northwestern. Now these patients range in age from 12 to 87 years old. Uh, their uh, problems, anything from multiple fractures to cardiac difficulties. And there is one concern. I did talk to uh, a nurse at one of the hospitals today, and one of the concerns they have is uh, taking care of the emotional trauma of moving these people from one hospital across the state to another hospital. And right now, uh, one final note, uh, that plane is not in the air yet. Uh, we've been waiting here all evening, and uh, it's been rescheduled several times. So we'll keep an eye. Do you know if medical personnel are also being evacuated and going along with the patients? Uh, I, I do not know um, where they are going from the hospital, but uh, it's my understanding that there are people on board the plane who will be caring for uh, the different patients on board. And they've already been assigned in the Twin Cities? Yes, they have, uh, to different hospitals in groups of two or three. Okay. Thanks very much, Thanks. Greg. Yeah. The Grand Forks Herald newspaper is no longer just reporting the news, it's part of the news. Yesterday's downtown fire destroyed the paper's newsroom, and its press is underwater. Now, Knight Ritter happens to own both the Herald and the Pioneer Press, so now the Herald's being printed in St. Paul. Today's edition was the first of likely many that will be printed in the Twin Cities. People are offering their homes. They have cottages. There's another guy up in, um, he's got a place up in Halleck, so a four-unit um, apartment complex. So they're all offering that, and it's really just nice to see.
That was obviously the wrong sound, but uh, what they were trying to say is they spent a lot of time yesterday just trying to come to grips with what it means to be part of such a story as this, and having the paper gone and the newsroom gone is something that they're having a difficult time coping with. Now, the Herald's reporters are using a high school classroom as a newsroom, and they are sending their stories to St. Paul on the Internet. You might find that last interview a little more relevant here. Mm -hmm. Flood concerns continue to flood North Dakota's emergency operations center. Volunteers are busy fielding calls daily from 6 in the morning to midnight. Calls for volunteers are common. There are also calls from flood evacuees worried about stranded pets. Becky Samuelson took calls for five hours today. She says she's most touched by those calling to help. And the Red Cross is also offering emergency shelter as well uh, as uh, medical assistance to flood evacuees. The number to call is 612-871-7676. The number again, 612-871-7676. And if you'd like to donate cleaning supplies, make a cash donation, or volunteer your services to help flood victims, you can call us now. Salvation Army crews are live in our studios to take your phone calls. They'll tell you how you can best make a difference. The number to call is 612-542-1111. That's 612-542-1111. All right.